So let's talk Bitcoin and Ethereum. So Bitcoin is the world's first successful crypto. It was created by Satoshi Nakamoto, a pseudonymous person or group who launched the technology in 2008 in the middle of the global financial crisis. So Satoshi's core idea is simple. Bitcoin is digital money that allows for secure P2P transactions on the internet. Our financial system today is a closed system. You can't store your wealth or transact without the permission of authorities and intermediaries. Bitcoin, however, is open. You can transact and store money with anyone, and that's revolutionary. So with Bitcoin, Satoshi unleashed a really powerful idea. And there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in existence. And that's what ensures Bitcoin is a scarce and valuable asset. So that's Bitcoin. Now let's chat about Ethereum. Ethereum was launched in 2015, six years after Bitcoin. Ethereum's creator Vitalik Buterin set out to build a new kind of global decentralized computing platform. While Bitcoin is focused more on being a store of value and a payment network, Ethereum is a programmable blockchain that allows you to build decentralized applications or dApps on its network. So once again, think of Bitcoin as a simple and robust system where you can store digital value and send it around the internet. Now that's already pretty useful. Ethereum, on the other hand, is a platform with a million possible applications. Your imagination is the only limit. Ethereum dApps are built using a technology called smart contracts. Think of a smart contract like a program, except that program is on a decentralized network and its code is open source for anyone to read and understand. And smart contracts can interact with other smart contracts like Legos. So instead of you having to do a business deal between two companies to work together, smart contracts just plug into each other and so different developer smart contracts will just work together. There's a host of different applications that you can build on Ethereum and now let me tell you about some of those as well. Let's start with tokens. With Ethereum, anyone can now launch a token without needing to launch their own blockchain. So if you have an idea for a token, you can just mint it on Ethereum and then you can distribute it to your friends or your users or your business partners in a few clicks. A token is just a smart contract running on Ethereum. Now moving on from tokens, there's DeFi. So DeFi is a whole new category of smart contracts. It's called decentralized finance or DeFi for short. DeFi is an umbrella term for peer-to-peer -peer financial services built on blockchains. You can earn interest, borrow, lend, trade, buy insurance, trade derivatives, all without any paperwork and without any centralized intermediaries. Some of these are Aave, Uniswap, and there's a whole bunch of other DeFi uh, apps as well. And they work for everyone anywhere in the world. So whether you're in Texas or Tanzania, if you have a smartphone and the internet, you can access DeFi. That's really different from the way traditional finance works today. NFTs. So NFTs or non-fungible tokens are another really popular use case of Ethereum. NFT stands for non-fungible. And fungible means when things are the same and non-fungible means when they're unique. When two things are the same, they have equal value. So they're interchangeable. So think of it like US dollars or Bitcoin. They're all the same. And so you can exchange one for another one and it's all the same. With non-fungible assets, they're a type of crypto token that's unique. And because it's published to the blockchain, you can prove that uniqueness and scarcity and rarity by just looking directly at the blockchain. So you can look at the blockchain and you can see, hey, there's only one of this NFT. That means it's rare and unique. NFTs are used in the art world. They can be used for music. They can be used for tickets, for sports. There's a whole variety of applications. Now let's talk DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations. This is another type of application on Ethereum that's somewhat new. Corporations today are rooted in the legacy financial system and the legacy corporate system. They're organized through legal contracts and physical offices and employment contracts and a whole lot of paperwork and bureaucracy. DAOs, however, run on top of open blockchains and they let people organize amongst themselves directly on the internet, including moving money around collectively as a group. So one example of that was Constitution DAO, which raised over 40 million from 17,000 con contributors in one week to bid on a copy of the US Constitution. They may have lost that particular bid, but DAOs won center stage that day when the whole world saw how quickly people could organize and get together on the internet to do some big things uh, with the power of, da of DAOs. 
So Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency, and then Ethereum followed shortly after. And Bitcoin you can think of like digital gold. It aims to be a global reserve asset where the use case is primarily about money. It's a store of value, it's aiming to be a medium of exchange, it's an investment, and it has all the fundamental properties of gold, such as scarcity, durability, fungibility, and it has a fixed maximum supply. That's where the scarcity comes from. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in existence. That's written into the code itself. So if Bitcoin is like gold, Ethereum, you can think of like digital oil. So sure, you can buy a bunch of gallons of oil or gasoline and store them away as an investment. And there are probably some people that do that, but that's not the fundamental purpose of oil. It was designed to be used or burned. So what was Ethereum designed to be used for? Ethereum is a set of general purpose building blocks that you can use to build and do other stuff. Like a lot of the things that Sid mentioned are based on Ethereum. One key difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum is in their consensus mechanisms, which gets a little bit into how the cryptography works. So Bitcoin is based on proof of work. And that means that the network needs a lot of processing power or energy to function. So proof of work blockchains like Bitcoin are secured and validated by virtual miners that are distributed all across the world competing with each other to solve complex cryptographic puzzles. And it takes a lot of processing power to solve those puzzles. And the winner gets to update the blockchain with a new block that has the latest verified transactions and is rewarded by the network with Bitcoin. That incentive, that Bitcoin that they get paid out if they win, is critical to how decentralized systems work. They need incentive structures to maintain the integrity and security of the network. And if someone tries to take over the network, the difficulty to mine that new block will increase and vice versa. Now Ethereum, when it was first launched in 2015, it used proof of work too. But in September of 2022, Ethereum switched to a new consensus mechanism called proof of stake. Ethereum's developers believed that proof of work would present limitations in scalability. So as more and more people started using it as a medium of exchange and the network would get bigger and bigger, it wouldn't work. So they switched to proof of stake. And just like proof of work, in proof of stake, a network participant gets selected to add the latest block of verified transactions to the blockchain and earn a reward. The key difference with proof of stake is that instead of using virtual miners, proof of stake uses a network of validators who contribute or stake their own coins in exchange to get an, to add a new block and earn that reward. So Bitcoin and Ethereum are built a little different and they're aiming to solve fundamentally different problems. They're not necessarily in competition with each other.